Hello, I'm Matt Britton, and I run Google's operations and business in Europe, the Middle East, and Africa. I'm happy to join you, and I hope that you and your loved ones are well. I'm really looking forward to the times when we can all meet again in person. Yes, Next On Air is a cloud conference, but I didn't plan to talk about infrastructure or databases. I want to talk about Google and our big commitment to help inclusive, sustainable economic recovery. With skills, helping people learn new skills to find jobs. With tools, helping businesses grow online. And with rules, working with governments and communities to boost recovery. We've all seen how online tools can be a lifeline in the lockdown. And we can also see how they'll be a catalyst for the economic comeback. For health information, education and the economy, for people, communities and businesses, and for organisations like Savoir Faire Ensemble. Businesses in the French fashion and textile industry supported the fight against the virus by getting together, coordinating their resources. They formed this organisation, Savoir Faire Ensemble, and they shifted their resources to produce masks and surgical gowns to help slow the spread of the virus. Our tools help their suppliers and their buyers collaborate remotely. This became a collective organisation one of millions of organizations and businesses across the globe who embraced online tools to help their communities, to ease business model transition, to strengthen supply chains during the pandemic. In fact, globally, the consumer and business use of technology has leapt forward five years in perhaps five months. We've seen a 60% increase in internet usage overall. Online searches for online shopping or how to buy online grew by 200% worldwide and our own video conferencing solution, Google Meet, saw its daily peak usage grow by 30 times. All of us have faced some harshness in the conditions we've had during the pandemic. Some have found new opportunities to innovate. I've been inspired by so many of the stories. For example, Landbot reduced the pressure on emergency systems with chatbots that processed 280 million messages during the pandemic. Ocado technology supported their retail partners to deliver 40% more groceries during the pandemic than pre-lockdown. But not everyone has access to these transformational tools or the skills to use them. Even before the crisis, it was clear that the jobs of the future would need a new set of digital skills. We did work with McKinsey and we found that people will need to learn new skills and that some will need to change careers as some jobs and industries are disrupted and COVID-19 has only accelerated the speed of that transition. So now it's even more urgent to invest in people and businesses for a sustainable and inclusive recovery. You and your family want that recovery to be rapid. You need the skills and jobs to support you and you deserve technology that helps. But what are we doing? Recently, we launched a pledge to help 10 million people and businesses in Europe, the Middle East and Africa to find jobs, to digitize and to grow over the next 18 months. It comes down to four things. Investing in skills to help you and your employees to get ready for the jobs of the future. Providing tools to help businesses digitize and recover faster. Helping governments build programs for a resilient and equitable workforce. And finally, we have to ensure that economic recovery is also green and sustainable. Let me take each of those in turn. Technology must help everyone prepare for the jobs of the future, creating that sustainable, inclusive economy by eliminating the barriers to learning. Barriers caused by inequities such as where you live, your race, your financial resources, your access to education. And we know a bit about how to help with skills. It's called Grow with Google. We set out five years ago to train a million Europeans in digital skills, working with governments, trade unions and training organisations. We were blown away by demand. We've scaled it globally and we've now trained over 70 million people around the world. And during the lockdown, we saw a three times increase in demand for this training. Now to tackle the skills gap for jobs in STEM, specifically science, technology, engineering, and maths, we're introducing a new suite of Google career certificates. These will help people get qualifications into high paying, high growth jobs such as IT support or data analytics or UX and design. And you don't need a university degree to take part. We're covering the costs for 100,000 people to take these Coursera courses. More than half of the certificates will be specifically dedicated to underserved communities. 
and they include scholarships to provide childcare or technology or language support. And to support the job search after the training, we're developing and actively looking for partners for a global hiring consortium, companies who consider graduates of these courses for jobs. Now, on top of those courses, you can also earn Google Cloud skills badges or take free foundational courses in cloud computing or big data or machine learning, all of them on our website. Let's switch from digital skills to digital tools. As I mentioned earlier, online tools have been a lifeline during the pandemic to both individuals and businesses. They helped you stay connected with customers, keep your employees working and adapt to changing customer expectations. That's why we're helping businesses like yours with new digital tools to help you communicate with customers online, collaborate with remote teams and transform your operations with AI. If your store's shut, you need tools to generate awareness to simplify communication with customers. And Google My Business includes tools in search and maps so that you can spread the word, stay connected and keep customers up to date. During the crisis, we released a number of new features, including for restaurants to inform customers that they now do home delivery. If you manage a team, you need to reimagine the way you work. Many of you are familiar with G Suite. And as you may have heard, we recently announced a new brand, Google Workspace which has all the productivity apps you know and love, Gmail and Calendar and Drive and Docs and Sheets and Slides and Meet and more, thoughtfully connected together. So that whether you're at home, at work or in the classroom, it's the best way to create, to communicate and collaborate. If you want to transform your operations, you need access to AI and we want that to be for everyone, not just for multinationals or for the tech sector, AI for everyone. We recently launched our AI for Business checkup tool in 11 countries, and it gives you a personalized report on how to implement AI in your business, the potential benefits and how to get started. In Italy, I talked to the CEO of a packaging company, Zaccaria Franceschetti. They now use AI-based Google solutions to boost their supply chain efficiency and reduce costs. Investing in AI helped them monitor company processes in real time from their supply chain, to warehouse systems, to logistics and delivery. They saw a dramatic increase in operational efficiency, doubling their profit margins in three years. Bold community initiatives are needed to fully recover and keep the economy moving. And for governments to create the conditions for a resilient and equitable workforce, they need to work with technology partners with deep industry expertise and build programs to support the most heavily impacted communities. For example, in partnership with the Italian government and the European Union and various local partners, Crescere in Digitale is our program that helps young Italians find opportunities and develop their digital skills through online training. So far, it's trained 82,000 people and activated almost 4,000 business internships. Google.org, our philanthropic arm, is also partnering with Youth Business International to support over 200,000 underserved small and medium-sized businesses in 31 countries to respond to the COVID-19 crisis. Finally, beyond skills, tools, government and community partnerships, we're investing in creating a greener future and green recovery in Europe. Sustainability has been a core value for us since Google was founded two decades ago. I joined Google in 2007 and that was the year we became carbon neutral. By 2017, we were the largest corporate buyer of renewable energy in the world. We operate the cleanest cloud in the industry. And we recently announced that we've eliminated our entire carbon legacy since our founding, as well as a new and most ambitious sustainability goal yet. We aim to operate on 24 seven carbon free energy in all our data centers and all our campuses worldwide by 2030. This means that every email you send through Gmail, every question you ask Google search, every YouTube video you watch is already carbon neutral. And in the future, our services will be supplied only by carbon free energy every hour of every day. Here in Europe, the European Commission has set its sights on another ambitious goal with the European Green Deal. That's to make Europe the world's first carbon neutral continent by 2050. We absolutely applaud this vision. We will support it in three ways. First, our own investment. By 2025, we will anchor more than 2 billion euros in green infrastructure investment and create more than 2,000 new green jobs in Europe. That comes on top of the green jobs and investments we made 
in the past. For example, between 2007 and 2018, we invested approximately 7 billion euros in constructing some of the world's most energy efficient data centers in Europe, supporting 9,600 full-time jobs across Europe each year on average. And then second, we want to help European businesses and partners increase energy efficiency by their own use of AI. Using machine learning, we reduce the energy needed to cool our data centers by 30%. And now we're making this proven cloud technology a solution available for customers and partners. And then thirdly, we want to help boost innovation in cities and support European nonprofits with a 10 million euro Google.org impact challenge. As an example, we've pledged to help 500 cities and local governments globally to reduce an aggregate of one gigaton, that's one billion tonnes of carbon emissions per year by 2030, more than a country the size of Germany emits today. So I hope that you can tell we remain fundamentally optimistic about the future. We know that getting there is not going to be easy and that there are going to be tough times ahead. And that's why Google's committing to help people gain skills and find jobs, to help businesses recover faster, smarter, cleaner, to help governments and communities accelerate recovery. Online tools and digital skills for everyone will be a catalyst for the comeback. And Google is here to help. Thank you.